When you buy a jar of kimchi at the store, chances are it's a few weeks old. But what would happen if you were able to age kimchi seven days, 30 days, 60 days, even a year? I'm Lauren Chun, founder of Mother-in-Law's Kimchi, and today we're gonna find out if kimchi gets better with age. Kimchi is a pickling process. The root words mean salted vegetables, and it can be made with any vegetables. They're somewhat like 200 foundational recipes for kimchi making in Korea. This is just made kimchi. It's about an hour old, just mixed up. And this is a kachari style. So commercially made kimchi that you would purchase in the United States. It's Napa cabbage with an assortment of seasonings like garlic, ginger, and chili flakes, gochugaru flakes. This is how all kimchi is born, but it's about to go through a radical transformation. So this is a seven day old kimchi, typical of something you'd find in a jarred kimchi that you buy in the store. You could tell that it's already been sort of softened and much more pliable. I mean, it started out as the same thing, but you could tell in seven days, this one is soft and just juicy. The gochugaru is really um, transforming from this white speckled cabbage into something that is much more coated and soft and crimson and integrated. So now we're gonna move on to 30 days and we're gonna look at that same kind of leaf. But um, you can already see that it's even more pliable and there's a lot more just sort of melding of the colors that have sort of been infused into the rib of the kimchi as well as just a little bit of translucence that is starting to happen. The broth is a lot more crimson and I've melded together, much more so than the seven days. The broth is really all that seasoning and garlic, ginger, all of those glutamites all kind of coming together. So 60 days, you could tell the sauces have really just been infused into the Napa cabbage and it almost looks dry. It's just taken on much deeper hues of crimson color and just really looks like something that's like a halfway dried apricot, if you will. In kimchi, it's actually good to see something like this that's soggy. It means that it's been properly brined and the, the seasonings and all of the balance of fermentation have come together to make it so pliable and delicious looking. So this one-year-old kimchi, you're not gonna find it at the stores. It's either something you've gotta make yourself and put away or have a good kimchi connection. This one-year-old kimchi came from my mother's kimchi refrigerator. It's a very big deal having a one-year-old kimchi. So this is an ongi, it's a, a small one. It is traditionally the way in which you would put the kimchi in and bury it underground. It's a semi-porous membrane of, of clay that Koreans really believe create a ideal fermentation flavor. So about a year old kimchi, you start to see the leaves even, even more sort of translucent and softer. But interestingly, the, the, the sauce itself really kind of turns into a consomme. Yeah, so this is just really, really soft. I would love to put this on top of a pork bosom right now. So look at the difference between these two kimchi so i've got the seven day here and i've got the one year and notice how just this is totally gone translucent and more sort of a greenish tone and the seven day is still white i think the color of the of the gochugaru and as it ages it really becomes mellow as well but the color itself gives off the prelude to what it will taste like so we can see how much the appearance of kimchi changes over time but we're going to also see how the most dramatic changes happen with smell and taste so let's smell the seven days i could smell a little bit of that sourness a little bit of anchovies a little bit of chili flakes but mostly I smell a lot of the sweetness of the cabbage coming through. And the sour smell smells like bright, like citrusy on my nose. So this 30 day old kimchi is a sensory explosion for my nose. Like I'm getting leather, I'm getting leather, barnyard leather. The gochugaru and all of the seasonings have sort of melding into this really complex composition. And I almost smell like the smokiness that's coming through from the chili flakes. You know, there is um, some fermented sour notes coming through, maybe not quite like a sherry vinegar. Okay, so this is a 60 day old jar of mother-in-law's kimchi that we've been fermenting. And I wanna show you all the bubbles and fermentation that's happening inside this jar. When we open it, it may pop, it may fizz, it may 
even explode, but this is all good. It's part of fermentation. Okay, look at all the bubbles. Ooh, I can smell that. Like it has a complexity now with the kind of the sour notes, but also just this umami and sweetness of the, of the cabbage all coming together. I'm getting some major anchovy and seafood. I'm getting a brininess and concentrated flavors that all kind of come from the seasoning. Most people are kind of surprised to know that there's things like fish sauce or that kimchi is not vegan, but it's actually those components of protein that really work during fermentation to bring out these glutamites and these, these really complex flavors. It's a brininess that's similar to like a ocean water, like oysters, really incredibly complex um, flavors that you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect um, in a pickled uh, vegetable. Wow. So this one-year-old kimchi is so exciting because it doesn't even smell anything like all the ingredients that I put in. And it smells more like a vinaigrette and yet it also smells like a little bit of tomatoes, a little mushroom. It smells more like a kind of a, a cheesy, like blue cheese. I think it's incredible that you've got a one-year-old kimchi and it doesn't even smell much like anything that we put in from the very beginning to make kimchi and then we get all these kind of secondary transformation of smells that can only come from fermentation. So we went on a real journey from seven days to a year, smelling all the different components of kimchi, but the real test will be how they taste once you put it in your mouth. There's this terminology in Korean cooking called sonmat, and it really means as if your hands have taste, because nothing is measured and everything is massaged or using your hands, and so, it's really this love that comes from this kind of making food with your hands. Such a reverence to vegetables and particularly kimchi making. I remember my grandmother would take a leaf of, of cabbage and then you would use your hand to kind of cut it into strips like this because using a knife would really be damaging and too harmful and violent. Nowadays, for convenience sakes, we have the kimchi scissors. You know, this is just a great way to cut your kimchi as you eat it. And what this does is releases all the amazing carbonation that you, you get during that fermentation. Mmm, little flavors of sweetness from the ca cabbage coming through. Still no, no sign of sourness at all. Pleasant enough, but um, not really anything that I would equate with kimchi. So it's tasting more like a marinade of vegetable than a kimchi that you might know. Let's let's taste this 30-day-old kimchi and see what's happened. Mmm. Yeah, I'm getting really this tangy notes that I associate with kimchi and um, I just want to keep eating more because it just brings all of the delicious umami notes that are in, in the kimchi ingredients like we talked about, like goju garu really kind of fading in the background, and I taste um, those sour notes, but also just that kind of smoky notes kind of coming in at the end. Still, it has this kind of sourness that is really like a crisp apple, like just something that is very pleasant, like what you want in a, in a pickle. So here we are tasting the 60-day kimchi, and I'm super excited about this one. Mm -mm. It has so many different layers of umami flavors that come from those seafood protein components. Just all these secondary flavors through fermentation are really coming out in this kind of meaty, this kind of um, complex way. I love this one. It's just kimchi that I want to sit down and have with my favorite red Bordeaux or something. It's, it's, just, it's a kimchi you can hang out with. Okay, so now we're tasting the one-year-old. I know I said that I smelled uh, some some tomatoey kind of um, mushroomy, uh, and I just wonder what it's gonna taste like in my mouth. It just tastes so delicate, all the flavors of um, that brininess, but also the kind of tomatoey flavors are kind of coming through. It's like the 60 days had so much concentrated flavor and personality, and then it took 10 months um, to really kind of find its mellowness and have this refinement of everything kind of coming together. I mean, look at the color, it's just so exciting. It looks like a consomme, and it tastes like I, I could taste my mother's sonma. Thanks, Mom. So the whole idea of fermentation is to really try to um, transform what you've made from a kimchi that's fresh and young, much like a salad, into these transitions of mellowed 
balanced kimchi that shine through only with time. Just remember that no kimchi is ever the same. Each bottle captures a time and place, its own bacteria, and it's just a, such a unique living live food. So kimchi is better with age, but for me, somewhere right around 60 days is the sweet spot. It's where just sort of the concentration of flavors, the multidimensional texture, and everything kind of comes together to show me how good this kimchi is and what it will continue to be. And by the time you get to the one-year-old, it's just seamlessly like a butter sauce, but it's really the ultimate hallmark of a, of a properly fermented kimchi that you can taste in a year. It's really come together as what kimchi can be. Kimchi is something that is vital in Korean cuisine and was part of a meal, every meal. And there's a saying in Korea that if you have kimchi and rice, you'll never starve. Mm -hmm.